Hi everyone! Welcome back to Husky Robotics FRC Java Tutorial Series. I'm Jasmine and today we are going to take a deeper dive into commands. The most common way to run a command is by binding it to a triggering event, such as a button being pressed by a human operator. Since command-based programming is a declarative paradigm, trigger binding is also declarative meaning that the association of a trigger and a command is declared once during robot initialization. The library then does all the hard work of checking the state of the trigger and then scheduling or canceling the command as needed. The trigger class has a number of bindings which will automatically schedule a command when a certain event occurs. However, each of the binding has specific behaviors. The button class and its subclasses have bindings with identical behaviors, but with slightly different names that better match a button than an arbitrary triggering event. Let's take a look at some of the different types of bindings. The when active or when pressed binding schedules a command on the iteration when a trigger changes from inactive to active, or accordingly when a button is initially pressed. The command will not be scheduled again unless the trigger becomes inactive and then active again. The when inactive or when release binding schedules a command when a trigger changes from active to inactive. Again, the command will not be scheduled again unless the previous condition has been met. The while active continuous or while held binding schedules a command repeatedly while a trigger is active and cancels the command when the trigger becomes inactive. The while active once or when held binding schedules a command when a trigger changes from inactive to active and cancels it when the trigger becomes inactive again. The command will not be rescheduled if it has finished while the trigger is still active. The most common way to trigger a command is by binding it to a button on a joystick. To do that, we first need to create a joystick object. Once that is done, we can create a joystick button object for a button on the joystick. To bind a command to that joystick button, simply call the desired button binding method and pass the command as the argument. Next, let's take a look at command groups. As the name suggests, command groups are combinations of multiple commands, which allows code to be much cleaner and simpler. There are four basic types of command groups. A sequential command group runs a list of commands in sequence. The first command will start executing, and once it has finished, the second command will start executing, then the third, and so on. The sequential command group ends when the last command in the sequence has finished. A parallel command group runs a list of commands concurrently. Basically, all commands will execute at the same time. A parallel command group ends when all commands have finished. Like a parallel command group, a parallel race group runs a list of commands concurrently. However, a parallel race group ends as soon as any command finishes. All other commands will be interrupted at that point. Finally, a parallel deadline group also runs a list of commands concurrently. However, a parallel deadline group finishes when a specified command or the deadline command ends. Again, all other commands will be interrupted. Most importantly, command groups themselves are commands. This allows them to be recursively composable, meaning that a command group may contain other command groups as components. For example, a sequential group structure may be embedded within a parallel one. These more complex structures can be again embedded in another structure. As a result, composition is an extremely powerful tool that can achieve complex robot behavior. Since command groups are commands, they must also declare requirements. However, this does not need to be done explicitly as requirements are automatically inferred from the commands included. As a rule, command groups require the union of all of the subsystems required by their component commands. Additionally, 
Parallel type groups may not contain multiple commands that require the same subsystem. As a note, in Java, command instances added to a command group cannot be independently scheduled or added to a second command group. Doing so will crash the program. The basic structure of a command group is pretty simple. Commands are added to a command group through the super call in the constructor, and the behavior of the command group depends on what type of parent command group class it extends. The order that the commands are listed in the super call matters for some command group types. For a sequential command group, the order of commands is the order of execution. For a parallel deadline group, the first command is the deadline command. The entire command ends when this command finishes. Command groups can be created without having to subclass at all. The commands can be simply passed through the constructor of the desired command group type. This is called an inline command definition and is very useful when command groups are not likely to be reused and it would be wasteful to write an entire class for them. In general, the command libraries contain several convenience features that can greatly reduce the complexity of code. Like command groups, commands can be inlined or defined in a single line of code, which can be extremely useful in situations such as for commands that only call a single subsystem method. In order to inline a command definition, we must specify what code the command will run as constructor parameters. In Java, a reference to a subroutine that can be passed as a parameter is called method references. And the general syntax for a method reference is object double colon method. Another way to pass a subroutine as a parameter is through lambda expressions. A lambda expression allows a subroutine to be defined inside a parameter list with the arrow being the lambda operator. The most common way to use the Lambda expression in FRC Java is to call a subsystem method with literal arguments. As seen in this example, instead of writing a whole separate command class to set the drivetrain's max output at half power and another whole command class to set the drivetrain's max output at full power, the same behavior can be accomplished using inline command definitions in just two lines of code. The command base library contains several pre-written command types for common use cases. Many of these commands are intended to be used via inlining, but they can also be subclassed too. Some commonly used pre-written command types include the instant command class, which executes a single action and then ends immediately, the run command class, which runs a specified method repeatedly and has no end conditions by default, and the wait command class, which does nothing and ends after a specified period of time elapses after its initial scheduling. It is generally good practice to include subsystem requirements in these commands constructor. The command interface contains several decorator methods that can be used to add additional functionalities onto existing commands. Some decorator methods include the with timeout method, which adds a timeout to a command. The decorated method will be interrupted if the timeout expires. The with interrupt method, which adds a condition on which the command will be interrupted and the before starting method, which adds a method to be executed before the command starts. And that is all the topics for this video. Thanks for watching and have a great day.